Wood turning can be a dangerous activity. As such, I am not responsible for your safety should you choose to replicate my methods. Wear your safety equipment or not at your own peril. Now on with the show. Hey YouTube, how you going? Uh, Pipe nutter here. Well, Glenn, drop me woodworks, whatever. Um, I'm uh, just leaving the house. Uh, I'm going to be going up to uh, the burl supplier. Uh, I've got to get a uh, nice piece of red mallee burl for uh, Jim, Jim Deshane. Um, he and I are doing a trade. Uh, he wants one of my ashtrays and I want one of his pipes. So uh, yeah, so I thought I'd take you along for the ride. So uh, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to film when I get to the other end. Um, I don't know the guy that well. Uh, only been there once before, so uh, we'll see how we go. Uh, and then this will roll into a uh, wood turning video. So uh, stay tuned. Cheers. Simply Burls and Slabs. Uh, I'll put a link to their website and everything like that down in the bucket. So, uh, yeah. So, like I said, I don't know whether this guy is open for me filming or not, but um, we'll uh, go and ask anyway. So, uh, here we are. YouTube um, a bit that was uh, the last bit you just saw uh, was about four months ago <laughs> and there's been a uh, multitude of different things happening between then and now like uh, I had to get the uh, my lathe headstock uh, rebuilt uh, had a, another different size lead screw uh, put in it which meant uh, the faceplate I was going to use uh, won't fit on there anymore so I've had to go out and buy another faceplate to uh, put on the lathe. So that being said, still haven't gotten all that far with uh, with the burl. <laughs> I'm about to get into that now. Uh, I did, however, peel a lot of the bark off that was on the back of this thing, and it looks like we've got a fair chunk of burl, intact burl, anyway. Uh, there's nothing saying that once I do get this thing going, it's not going to blow apart anyway, which is part of the fun of turning burl. Uh, so. Um, I'm going to get this thing trimmed up a little more and uh, more in a circle or, or a blank and uh, then I'll mount the faceplate to it and then we've got a little bit of fun we're going to because my the, the the clearance in between uh, the, the the center and the bed on my lathe isn't that great so uh, I'm going to turn the headstock out about 45 degrees so that's going to make things interesting when it comes to turning this thing when it's unbalanced because my lathe might just end up walking out my garage door. So uh, we'll just have to see how that one works out. So uh, anyway, uh, stick around. I'm gonna put a lot of this into fast forward motion and, and whatnot, and uh, hopefully um, it'll uh, all make sense, at least to someone, because it doesn't make sense to me. So anyway, uh, stick around. All for you, Jim. Okay, so I've just trimmed off the blank. And to give you some idea of the colour that's going to be inside it, this is what we're looking at. So it's a red mallee, as I said. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the colours we're going to see through it. You can see all the grain running down here. And uh, as I said, it's a lot like briar in that where you've got uh, these peaks. Um, that's where you get all your um, bird's eye grain out of it. So... Uh, it's similar, but it's very, very, very much coarser. So, um, so yeah, so I'll just show you that. So, well, anyway, uh, 
I'll uh, spin the camera around and you can see the blankets. Big. <laughs> it should be fun. Okay, campers. Well, you can see I finally got it mounted to the lathe. Um, I haven't started it up yet and I've had to come up with some creative ways to mount the damn thing, uh, whether it's safe or not, I don't know. So, I'll show you what we've got going on here. Okay, in there is a shim. <laughs> uh, that's because the brand new faceplate that you see uh, isn't long enough to cover the entire lead screw without the bit of wood hitting the motor at the back. So, against my better judgment, <laughs> and I'm probably a freaking idiot for doing this, and if anybody wants to yell, uh, contain yourself, because I've already yelled enough at myself. Um, this is startup number one. Uh, I've got some logs down uh, here that I'll probably end up having to weigh down my entire lathe stand uh, because uh, of the block being out of balance. So uh, here we go. I'm recording this for posterity. Uh, and as you can tell, I'm right out of the way. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, I'd say she's out of balance. And you're probably going to ask yourself, why the hell are you turning it so fast? Because the slower spindle speed on this particular lathe is 500 RPM. So I'm going to be going like the clappers to get this damn thing trued up and in balance. So, uh, yeah, little redneck wood turning. <laughs> anyway, back with you soon. Okay, after an awful lot of faffing around, uh, I finally got this thing mounted. Uh, I had to do a lot of trimming on the blank. Uh, as you can see, it's still really out of balance. That's because of this great big chunk here. Uh, this is about as big a piece of wood as this lathe can handle. Uh, I tried it on my other lathe, but it's so out of balance and my other lathe isn't heavy enough uh, that the lathe just keep on wanting to walk out the door. And that's even after I've put a whole heap of logs and such all over the stand uh, to try and weigh it down. So this lathe's a whole lot heavier uh, and I can actually turn it slower on this lathe, which in the beginning is good because <laughs> uh, it is so out of balance. Um, if I zoom in here, you'll see, hopefully, that there's probably about a less than a five millimeter gap uh, in between the blank and the bed of the lathe. And uh, yeah, that took a lot of time to just trim up. So uh, we've finally got it to a point where I can turn it on and get turning. I've still got to sharpen my tools yet, but that's about as fast as I can get it going right now. And that's sitting at around about 345 RPM. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> I've also had to remount it on the other side too. Uh, so using my flash fan tangle uh, faceplate, um, I've had to resort to a faceplate ring attached to a chuck. So uh, yeah, you do what works, I suppose. So anyway, I'm gonna go and sharpen my tools uh, and get turning this puppy. And hopefully there should be a whole lot less talking and a whole lot more turning. Okay, we're ready to turn. Tools are sharp. Okay, my intention here straight away is to try and get as much of this mass off as I can and form a tenon on the back uh, so I can get it into a chuck. Because uh, the sooner I can get it into a chuck, the more comfortable I will feel. So, uh, yeah, uh, it should have some nice color in it. Uh, there's even some spalting in it, actually, uh, just looking at it. So, um, yeah, so uh, let's get to it.
So, uh, we've got the cannon form now, and you can see our chuck fits. So uh, I've got a little bit more shaping to do around the outside. I'm going to take out this rough bit here, and I'll probably change this up and do what they call an OG shape. Um, it's a little bit more decorative and ornate than just a round bowl. Um, so uh, lends itself to doing a bit of a different lip as well. So uh, we'll do that. Um, there's a few funny bits in there, uh, which is not wholly unexpected. When I say funny bits, I mean inclusions, maybe resin pockets or something like that. After all, it is burl. Uh, it's very rare that you actually get a solid piece, although this is looking pretty darn good. So um, we've got bird's eyes everywhere. Let's see if I can zoom in on this a little bit and show you. Um, so all these little round, uh, you know, grain patterns here, that's all bird's eye grain. So it's going to look pretty nice when it's all polished up. So um, it's got a bit of a uh, pinky hue to it at the moment. Uh, when I get the polish on it, that'll uh, that'll turn into a bit more of a red. So I'm uh, I'm pretty happy with it at the moment. So it's going to do a bit more shaping, as I said, and uh, uh, then we'll get into it a little bit more. So cool. Okay. So uh, I've got the outside shaping done. Well, at the moment it's done anyway. I may just change my mind on it yet. We'll see how it goes. But the interesting thing about this piece of uh, Red Mallee, flip myself around here, is uh, all this spalting in around the uh, bird eye grain, uh, which I've never seen before. So uh, at the moment it's got a, uh, I've only sanded it to 80 grit. Um, but I put some um, sanding sealer on it because I'm going to call it for the day. Uh, but it just looks ridiculously good. I've never seen a piece like it. So yeah, there's, a, there's a look at some of it. You'll see what I'm talking about. So uh, I'm really excited to see how this turns out. Um, we've got a natural inclusion here. And, but that's, a part, that's about it. I mean, there's a few little divots in it. Um, so there, that, uh, and here, which is part of the natural uh, part of the outside of the burl. Uh, I'm one for letting the um, wood speak for itself. Come on, focus. Okay, that's, that's there you go. So I don't necessarily go and make things absolutely perfect because I think you take away from uh what already what's there so um so i'm gonna leave them in and i hope jim likes it so um it's uh what they call an og shape which is you know so sort it of comes in here at the bottom and flares out um i'm gonna put some sort of a lip or something on the outside of the uh, of the rim uh, just to break up everything make a little arty farty so uh yeah so that's where we're at at the moment and uh yeah i'm quite happy with it so anyway uh we'll get back
to about 320 grit. Um, I'm not going to make you suffer through me uh, sanding all the way through the grit. That's as boring as watching batshit dry, but um, yeah, I've got to um, continue up to about 1200 grit and um, then I'll put some polish on it. Uh, we'll see how we go there. If it actually looks interesting, I might actually um, film that bit. So, uh, but yeah, from here on out, it, it's all um, sanding, sanding, and more sanding. So, uh, yeah, I could think of a lot better things to do than actually sanding this myself. So, let alone watching it. So, anyway, uh, there it is at the moment. Uh, so it's uh, pretty much all shaped up. Uh, there's a cork knocker in the middle. And uh, yeah, uh, it's looking quite nice. The wood is spectacular. Um, it's everything I was hoping it was going to be. Um, so yeah, it's uh, yeah turning out to be quite nice. So um, if I do say so myself. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, uh, keep on fast forwarding. Cheers. Okay, uh, so we're all finished sanding. Um, it's uh, been sanded up to 1200 grit and it's got some sanding sealer on it which is now dry and time to polish it up so I'm going to use some uh, U-Boot Polishes uh, Triple E Ultra Shine uh, Ultra Shine sorry uh, and what it is it's a wax um, and it's got uh, Triple E particles in it and uh, the finer you uh, well the more you buff it the finer the particles get and the better the finish so uh, um, that's essentially what this stuff does uh, and the stuff, the polish I'm going to use um, is by another, U uh, it's another U uh product called Glow which is a shell, um, uh, oh, what do you call it, um, that shit that you shouldn't put on pipes <laughs> it's basically a shell of wax so uh, um, it's a friction polish so uh, that'll get about five or six layers of it on there so uh, yeah, okay, fast forward now. much faffing around and mucking about and whatever else uh, I have uh, the ashtray fitted to my cold jaws uh, which are expanded out to uh, well as far as I'll go <laughs> uh, we've got our uh, tool extension and all that sort of fun stuff um, if you've never done this before if you've never seen it done before uh, then this needs to be done uh, very gently so you want to only want to take light light cuts so uh, um, again, I'll put this in fast forward. <laughs> so, uh, I'm only going to be turning slow because with cold jaws you can't turn fast anyway. So, uh, yeah, that's that's the trick. So, anyway, uh, we'll get to it.
and we're done. Uh, this has been an epic project for me. Um, there's the, the base of it. I've still got to sign it and all that sort of stuff that Jim wants me to do. I don't know why, but I've got to do it. So uh, this is, yeah, this is the biggest project I've ever turned on my machinery anyway. Um, measures uh, 295 millimeters across, uh, it's 110 at the base, and it's roughly 90 mil high, uh, whatever that is in inches, I don't know, uh, Google it. Um, but it also weighs uh, 3.1 kilograms, so it's uh, a large project uh, for what I've got to use. So. Uh, yeah, but um, kind of sucks I've got to hand it off, but um, at the same time, I'm, I'm glad to send it. Uh, and that's the pipe I traded for. Uh, I love this thing. This is a beautiful pipe. Uh, and to me, it's worth, you know, every penny. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, um, Jim, as soon as I can, I will get this out in the mail. And... Uh, I think I have to take out a small bank loan to do it, <laughs> but uh, either way, it'll be on its way, and I hope you enjoy it when you get it, and I hope you use the bloody thing. I put a lot of effort into doing this, so uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching if you've gotten this far. Uh, take care, and uh, see you next time. Cheers.